Good morning. It's Tuesday. Brandon's day. You're mine now. You belong to me. There'll be no more complaining. No more Mr. Brandon. I have to go to the bathroom. Nothing. There is no bathroom. I might have a little too much coffee in me, but that's okay. I'm ready for this workout and it's arms day. One of my favorite days. Tuesday. Let's just get this done. I'll see you in the gym. We got rope extensions for warm up. Three sets, about 15 reps. Also, supersetted with sapling curls. Three sets, uh, around 15 reps. Warming up the elbow joint, getting some blood in the triceps. Also, doing sapling curls. It's warming up the forearms, getting a good rotation there in the supinated position and pronated, getting blood in the biceps. So, it's kind of using that flushing method going back and forth in two opposing muscle groups. So get a lot of blood in there, get a first initial pump, just doing three sets, about 15 reps, then we're gonna move on to single exercises and uh, go a little bit heavier and put more load and stress on the muscles. Time to hit some skull crushers. We're getting heavy with these, we're gonna do four sets, 12, 10, 8, 8. You know what the name of my school crushers is, is one badass exercise, which that's exactly what it is. It's really working on that long head of the tricep, but it's also putting a lot of pressure and a lot of tension on all three heads. So it really develops the whole tricep. It's a good exercise to include in the program. I would definitely highly recommend it. Barbell curls, I feel one of the best exercises for overall bicep development. From both heads go really heavy with the exercise, and uh, it's definitely a classic. Keep it in the program for sure. All right, the barbell curls was four sets, 12, 10, eight, eight. As I progressed through the weight, gradually going up, I felt like I couldn't get the eight repetitions on the last set, but that's okay. I just basically took it to the limit. So don't, don't ever limit yourself on the program just because it says eight reps. If you go up in weight, you only do six, that's fine. As long as you push it there and make sure that muscle works with the proper form. Behind the neck, tricep extension with the dumbbell. You really wanna focus on the stretch on this exercise, coming all the way down, actually feeling the weight pull back on the triceps, giving the full stretch, and then the top position, get a nice contraction. Also, we're doing this without a back, so that way you have to involve a lot of the core and also the lower back to stabilize you. So it makes it that much harder. It's a good exercise. All right, now on to incline dumbbell curls. This one isn't going to be alternated. The dumbbell curls are going to be curling at the same time. Palms up, get a nice squeeze. Again, this exercise focuses on the stretch. So what you want to do is really deactivate the deltoids and also at the very bottom, basically get a dead hang in your arms and you're going to have to pull that weight from that dead hang. It's going to make it that much harder. And you get a nice squeeze at the top, flex the muscle, you get the full benefit of the exercise. So these two exercises first, we did behind the neck dumbbell extensions with the, uh, for the triceps, getting the full stretch, and now we're doing that same kind of stretching mechanism for the bicep, getting the full benefit, and basically breaking down those fibers as much as we can. It's gonna be four sets, 10 reps each set. See in with the same weight, again, focusing on that stretch, and nice contraction at the top. This one definitely kicks your ass. Cross bench tricep dips. Really burning out the triceps at this point. It's the last exercise of the day for triceps. Keeping the reps high, just doing body weight at this point. Eventually in the program as we progress, we'll put more load on it. Probably dump a few 45 pound plates on the lap. But at this point, just really trying to flush more blood in there and uh, get that good pump, get the good detail in the triceps. Three sets, about 15 to 20 reps each. Concentration curls for the biceps. In this, uh, in this instance, I'm doing uh, hanging concentration curls, but you can do them on a bench. You can do them basically to have your thigh support your, your upper arm. This one I like doing hanging. It makes you basically force your form correctly so that way you use no momentum. Um, no momentum. And uh, so yeah, sticking with 45 pounds, but just doing three sets. 10 to 12 rep range. About to have breakfast. Now in this case, it's a perfect example of flexible eating habits. 
number one, I had my post-workout shake and had to rush to work. I didn't have time for breakfast. Even if I had pre-packed it, I still wouldn't have enough time because I had to work straight through. So I'm home now on a break. I'm going to make breakfast, but I'm going to minus the carbohydrates on this particular meal just because it's going to run so close with lunch, and lunch already has a cup of quinoa in my uh, veggies. So it's also running in the fact that I work just biceps and triceps today. It's not a major muscle group like legs or chest or back. It's mainly isolation exercises. So I hit that up. My arms, I'm pretty happy with them. So I'm not really going to have that many carbohydrates or even calories in general today because I'm not, my goal is not to add too much more size to my arms there. Uh, but this kind of runs along with we did legs yesterday and my legs are still feeling it. So whatever I, whatever I have today is also benefiting my legs. So you can't just cut out calories in general on a whole day, the following day of a major exercise just because you're not working that particular muscle that day. It's still getting the benefits of the nutrition days prior to help repair those muscle fibers. So that's what, one thing you got to keep in mind too. And whatever you take into the body, it's helping out uh, not one particular muscle, but it's helping the whole body out. So I'm going to have my egg whites, my steamed broccoli, and I'm going to minus my two slices of Ezekiel bread and peanut butter for this meal. So I'm just going to get the protein and nice fiber source in the broccoli. At work, I got a quick break, so I'm getting some cardio in. It's my first cardio of the day on the treadmill, 3.5 miles an hour, 10% incline. I'm actually gonna do this for an hour. All right, lunchtime. I have my one cup of quinoa, seven ounces of chicken, and uh, one cup of mixed veggies, which is like uh, green beans, onions, mushrooms. It tastes good. Uh, quinoa is cooked to perfection. And uh, if I don't say so myself. And seven ounces of chicken, get that nice protein in. Eating lunch a little later, which is fine. I get off work late, so I'll have dinner a little late. I mean, as long as you get it in, the uh, the eating habits should be flexible. Same with the workouts. As long as you're getting them each day, it doesn't matter the perfect timing. It's that way you supply your body the right amount of nutrients and also the right amount of activity. Last meal of the day, <clears throat> dinner. This is gonna consist of tilapia and some romaine lettuce. I'm just making a tilapia salad. Now, as you can see, my eating habits doesn't differ a lot from Hudson's. So it just comes down to healthy eating habits and what kind of food that contains. In this case, it's going to be lean protein sources. It's going to be high in fiber. And it's also going to be good uh, complex carbohydrates such as quinoa. Uh, Ezekiel bread, overnight oats, things of that nature. So sticking with those kind of foods is going to be the best for this program. It's going to keep your blood sugars low, uh, blood sugar levels low. It's going to keep your protein high, and it's going to keep your fats low as well. Um, just basically sticking with the healthy fats in this case. So I'm going to enjoy this salad, and then I'm going to head to bed. It's been a long day. Eating a little bit late, I usually have some protein yogurt, which consists of about a cup and a half or two cups of Greek yogurt, mixing some protein powder into that. But since it's a little later, I'm just going to have dinner, um, which is tilapia salad, and then uh, head to bed. So tomorrow is a nice heavy lift, and I'll probably introduce a little bit more calories because it's a heavier lift, which is going to be back. And in this case, just doing arms today, my calorie content was a little bit lower. Uh, my carbs were a little bit lower. I didn't really need to have a lot of calories in general just because I wasn't burning quite as much as I usually do with heavier lifts and cardio. Sometimes it might feel like Groundhog's Day having the same thing over and over each day. You get up, you work out, you have the same meals, you work, you go to sleep, and then it starts all over again. But what that's doing, it's building a habit. So over time, that habit becomes just part of your regular routine and regular schedule, and you don't even think about it anymore. So these kind of foods and these kind of workouts eventually just become part of your life. And that's the main goal in this program, is after eight weeks, 
it might feel like a strain at first. The first week it's kind of hard, but each week it gets easier and easier, and that's the most important thing. You want it to become easy, so that way you don't even think about it. You just get the job done. So that's the most important thing about food and fitness, is it feels hard at first, but just a lifelong dedication to it is the most important thing. You get a good body, you get a good mind, and it's building that habit is the most important thing. So it might be boring having these kind of foods, the same thing over and over again, but what you think about it is in the long haul, it's building that habit so you don't even think about it anymore, and you look in the mirror and happy with what you see. That's what this is all about. So this is Brandon, and I'm signing off. All right, dudes. See you later.